morning, my name is Andy Young and I'm one of the automotive lecturers down at Unitech in Auckland, New Zealand. And I'm currently filming or working on uh, the, another one of those Yamaha Vikings. And this video is going to cover very quickly how to set the valve clearance, or at least how to check and set the valve clearance on a 2014 Yamaha Viking. Pretty easy, there's two intake valves and two exhaust valves, we need to check all four of them for clearance. Uh, because as an engine wears, the valve clearance reduces usually uh, as the valves uh, eat away, as the valve seats and the valve face, uh, you know, the wearing face, the contact face, wears, the valve ends up going further up into the head and the valve clearance reduces between the top of the valve stem and the rocker normally, if it's got that, if it's that kind of setup. Now, one of the critical factors when checking valve clearance is the engine must be cold. You cannot start the engine um, before you do valve clearances, not even to move it around the workshop, because that's going to create warmth in the engine, and the various components are going to warm up, which means that they're going to expand due to thermal expansion. And if you set the valve clearances with even a semi-warm engine, then when the engine is cold, they're no doubt going to rattle due to excessive clearance. So make sure that you leave the vehicle parked overnight and do the valve clearances as your first job in the morning after it's had plenty of time to cool down. That's really important. Okay, let's head over to the vehicle now and find those rocker covers. Okay, so I'll flip the bed up and now we've got access down to where the engine is and very easily you can see the, uh, this is the intake rocker cover, and we're going to have to undo these four bolts here, look. And the exhaust is, the exhaust valves are down underneath that cover there. So much, much more accessible than on that Yamaha Grizzly. Really easy to get to, and no excuses, therefore, not to do this on a regular basis. Okay, well, just to make life a little bit easier... Uh, later on, I'm going to, for doing the valve of clearances on the exhaust, I'm going to remove this cover here. So we've got a 12 mil and 10 mil bolts, two of each, to shift. So we'll get those out of the way. And it'll just give us a lot more access to what we need to do. Wow, those are tight. Let's get some spray on there. Very long bolt with a thin piece of tin. Right, to the side. Okay. Um, it's all the difference putting a bit of uh, freeing oil on these bolts because they're pretty sure they'd have snapped off if we hadn't done that. And uh, when they go back in again, I'll be putting cup paste on these. Because they're pretty, pretty corroded, given all that salty environment. Okay. I'll stick a bit on there too. Even the smallest bit that gets on the thread makes all the difference. Okay, so next job is to remove the two covers. There we 
there we go, all the bolts the same length. And that O-ring that runs around there in theory should be replaced, but this is a pretty new vehicle so I'm not worried about that. Okay, so that's both the valve rocker covers removed and just while I run this, this side of the engine, the next job is to take out the spark plug. And that's going to make life a lot easier uh, turning that engine over and to also get it to maintain the position that we want uh, to check the valves. Okay. Did Andy, oh yeah, look at that, the right size socket and everything. There we go. Great stuff. And we'll be fitting a new spark plug uh, on another video after this. Cool. Okay, so the next job is to head round to the uh, the right hand side of the vehicle and remove the two little covers off the crankcase to expose uh, a little inspection hole uh, for the marks on the flywheel and also a big nut which we can rotate which will turn the engine over uh, to the correct position for taking the valve clearances. Right, we're going to remove this rear wheel to uh, give a bit more access to see what's going on. Okay, so these are the two covers that we need to remove off the left-hand side. Well, actually, the way the engine's positioned in the vehicle, the right-hand side of the engine, very strange. So we need to remove these two. Now, underneath this one is a big nut, and that's on the flywheel. And uh, under this one here is just an inspection hole, so we can see some markings on the flywheel. And you'll see that shortly. So we'll whip these off, and they shouldn't be very tight, so they should be quite easy to remove. This is a number 8 Allen key. There you go, look. And these things are often, very, very often over tightened because uh, the torque setting is minuscule, and I'll cover that when we put it back on again. Okay, and each one should have an O ring. Oh, yeah, there's one. Let's dip that out. Stick it back in there. And I mean, again, strictly speaking, we should be putting new ones of those on there. Next time, maybe. Okay, get that one taken out. Cool. Right, so we can see the big nuts, that's easy enough, but for you guys to see down that hole there is quite difficult. So I'll, I'll set the camera up really, really close so you can see what markings are going on whilst I'm turning this. Now, with a four stroke engine, the crankshaft turns twice for one revolution of the camshaft. We need to get the camshaft in just the right position. So it might be when we rotate this and get the mark here that we're actually 180 degrees out on the camshaft. And we'll need to turn the crank another full revolution and then back to the mark again to get the clearance. But I'll show you what I mean in a minute. Okay, here we go. I'm going to start turning that and you guys are going to be looking through this little little window here. Okay, so as I rotate the, rotate the engine, what you're looking for are markings on, on that part there, look, and we're looking for a little eye, a little li a vertical line, and it should line up with that little groove there, look. So we'll to rotate it around slowly, you can see some little numbers, all sorts of batch numbers and stuff on there as well. I'm going to keep turning it. My apologies for camera work, it's very awkward to get a good picture for you, so we'll keep turning that. Now, oh there we go, look. Okay, so we've got a H, sorry, we've got a, a H and then this little vertical line. Oh golly, there, just, just there, look. 
So I've set that and I'll take the camera off the tripod and get, try and get a really good close up so you can see what it looks like. All right, so I'll also put the diagram out of the manual on the screen. But if I use the uh, the flash, the light is a little bouncing off. That's the end of the H. And that's the little line there. There you go, look. That's the mark on the flywheel that we need to align with that little groove in the casing. Okay, so we'll head up now to the valves and we'll see if we're what we call rocking. There we go, look. Hey, that's not too bad. Right, so, oh, there we are. Yep, perfect. That was a bit of luck. So, just by wiggling the rocker, and this is the rocker here, up and down, we can see there's a little tiny bit of movement. And that's what we need. That's the clearance now between the adjuster here, the tappet adjuster. That's the lock nut, by the way. And uh, the tappet adjuster and the, the top of the valve, which is right down here, look. And you can see the little collets that are holding the whole thing together. So we need to take, take a measurement of that. And we'll just check the same... Yep, the exhaust valves, you can hear that, have also got some play, some clearance. So that tells us that the camshaft is in the correct position, ready for us to check the valve clearance. Now, if there was no movement and this was solid, then all you need to do is rotate the crankshaft another 360 degrees, and then you should then get this movement. If you don't, then you have a major problem in the fact that you have no valve clearance whatsoever. Right, moving on. Okay, so our spec is 0 0.09 to uh, 0.13. So let's see if they've um, worn so much that they're below minimum spec first. So we're going to find a combination of feeler gauges that are going to give us 0 0.09. All right, so what we can do is we can do a 0 0.08. And if that's too tight, then we know that it's one below spec. Right, we're almost there. Cool. Right, so 0 0.03, make sure there's not a crud on them. And 0 0.05 gives us 0 0.08, which is just below minimum spec. So let's go and see, first of all, if that's going to fit... Uh, between the adjuster and the top of the valve and if it does that's a good thing it means we're above spec minimum spec but if it doesn't then obviously these valves have worn quite a bit okay so let's do that one first mm, is it going in there now you'll be careful with these because they actually sit at a bit of an angle on the valve. So you've got to make sure you're fully across the adjuster. And no, that one doesn't. So that valve has worn quite a bit um, since its last adjustment. And the valve stem has basically come upwards towards the adjuster. That's how, how they were. Okay, so we're going to need to adjust that one, for sure. And this one... Let's do it from the side. Now oh, that one's fine. Okay. Good. Okay, so we're still going to adjust both of them. And we're going to adjust them to maximum spec. Now, maximum spec is 0 0.13. So I'm going to adjust them, uh, and to adjust them you undo this little lock nut here and you turn the bolt, basically the adjuster is the bolt with a little square shank on the top there, look. Now I'm fortunate, I've got a little Yamaha special tool, I'll go and get it for you. And it looks a bit like this. It doesn't fit all the valves because it depends on the size of the square shank. But it's really useful, especially when you've got valves to get to, like on some inline four motorcycles are a lot harder to to get to and it just sits on top of there look like that and I can turn this knurled wheel and it'll accurately hold or turn that adjuster. And that's really cool and you can get that from any Yamaha dealer. Um, I'll see if I can find the part number for you. I'm not sure um, how easy that's going to be but if I can get a hold of the part number I'll put it on the screen for you. If not just give Ian a call at uh, Motorcycle Central in Takapuna and I'm sure he can get you one. 
and I'm sure there's plenty of aftermarket ones out there too. Okay, so we're going to go. Uh, I'm going to set the feeler gauges now, and we want what was it we wanted? Uh, 0 0.13, which is maximum distance. And the reason why I set it to maximum is that way that they're going to these valve clearances are going to last for the longest period of time. They're going to stay within spec for the longest period of time because you know not everybody adjusts valve clearances on a regular basis. Okay, so what have we got? I need a 0 0.1, there we go. There's 0 0.1 and there was a 0.3, wasn't there? There we go. So we'll have to camera, Andy, to camera. We'll have that and we want that one there as well. And we don't need the rest of them, so very fiddly. Not my, doesn't help my big fingers. Yorkshireman, right. Stick that in there. Get rid of all those bits we don't need. That foily one is the one that always gets snapped off on these sets. So you'll be super careful. But uh, you might have noticed there is a part number on here. Yamaha Special Tool. And uh, it's, you can't see it on the scout camera. There you go, look. Uh, 01399 uh, thickness gauge. Very, very useful. Nice and slim and small and much better than the aftermarket stuff for getting into valve clearances. Okay, so we've got there, look, uh, if you can see that on the screen, 0 0.03 and 0 0.1. So that's going to give us 0 0.13. Just make sure there's nothing trapped between the two. We don't want a, a false reading. Okay, so let's first of all check the one uh, nearest to me, which is the one in the shot on the left, which is the one that had clearance above minimum. Let's see if that's going to fit. See if that needs adjustment. Yeah, that's tight. Okay, so I'll just leave that there. It should stay put. No. Okay, probably down there. Look, and we're going to just crack off that nut. Now, these kind of adjustments are extremely minor. You, you make a very small movement on the adjuster bolt results in quite a significant change in clearance. So I'm just going to crack that off. There we go. And keeping the spanner there, get the feeler gauges again. And we're just going to test that again. And now I can undo the nuts, the adjuster nut. You can see instantly it goes through, so there's doesn't take a lot. And while you're doing this, be careful not to be pushing down on the tool. We're just going to keep turning that clockwise until it just starts to nip. There we are. So we've nipped there. Back it off a fraction. Okay, and then we're going to tighten up the lock nut. Now, the thing with threads and bolts and stuff is when you tighten up the lock nut, it does actually pull the bolt up because there is always a very tiny amount of play between the threads and that usually increases the clearance and you can see now that's a really easy fit so we're going to have to just slacken it off oops slacken it off a fraction and just close it up a little tiny bit and it's fiddly there we go. So I'm going to dig out the feeling here just from the depths of the Viking. Okay, let's see how we're doing with that one. Oh, it's pretty good actually. Okay, so with the feeler gauges in place, I'm trying to work around the camera here, the next thing to do. It's all to do with the drag on the feeler gauges, but you can also just check that there's no more clearance moving it up and down. There's no movement, which there isn't. So am I happy with that? Yes, I'm happy with that. There's very slight drag on the feeler gauge, which tells me that that's the correct adjustment. So I've now set that particular valve's clearance to 0.13 millimeters. Now I do still have this one to do, and this is going to take slightly more adjustment because this was 
um, below minimum spec. So that one's closed up a lot more on the gap. Golly, do I miss my big workshop. Okay. One day. Right, so we'll slacken that off. We'll increase the gap, just close it off a little bit, and then we'll check it. And that's still too tight. By the looks of it. Oh, hang on, we're in. Oh, how lucky was that? That was bang on. Okay, we'll just tweak it up and see how much that changes it because it's bound to have some slight impact. And what I'll do is I'll make sure I hold the adjuster bolt in position. I don't want that turning with the nut, otherwise, that definitely will affect the. There we go. Now, there is a particular torque setting for these. And I'll put it on the video now for you. I say torque setting, that's for the, the lock nut on these tappet adjusters. Right, let's try that again. Yeah, there we go, look. Absolutely bang on. 0 0.13 millimeters clearance. Double check that one. Yep. Yeah. I'm happy with that. That one's probably very slightly less drag on it, but that's all good. All right, we'll just tweak that one as well. Don't want these things to come loose. There we go. One final check. That's the thing with valve clearances, you can't rush them. You know, it's a very fine adjustment. See, that's just, that's a little bit, uh, that's a little bit too slack, I think. I think we'll give that a little tiny tweak. And the thing with valve clearances is, um, you know, you often spend a lot of time getting in there removing lots of components to get to the valves don't rush it Let's see how we are with that oh that's better okay let's just lock that off and hold the adjuster at the same time don't let that turn Oh yeah, cool, perfect, done. So the intake valve, both intake valve clearances are now set to 0.13 mil, which is maximum spec, and they should therefore last the longest period of time before they go under minimum spec. Brilliant. Right, time for the exhaust valves. Cool, that took ages to get the camera set up there for you. Right, now the exhaust valves, let's find out what the spec is for that. Okay, so 0 0.16 is the minimum spec, so let's just check for that first and see if any of these have gone below minimum spec. It, normally exhaust valves tend not to wear quite as quickly because they tend to be a lot harder than the intake valves. They certainly get a lot hotter. Okay, so 0 0.16. Well, we've got a 0 0.15, so we'll use that one, that's near enough. If that doesn't go between the gap, then we know that the valves have worn beyond minimum spec. So there's a smaller gap or less clearance, or so the clearance is below 0 0.15, which is bad. Okay. Nope. Oh, there we go. Yeah, okay. So 0 0.15, that fits in. Quite tight there. And on the other side, same again, it does fit. So the clearance is definitely above 0.15, which is good. So it's going to be 0.16 or above. Cool. So now we'll set the feeler gauges to 0.2, which is the maximum spec. 
There is a point two, remember. There we go, look. Okay, well, that's quite convenient. One feeler gauge. More than Yamaha. Okay, so if this now fits in, then the clearance is excessive. Okay, well, that doesn't fit. You can see it buckling up, and it's quite a, quite a thick feeler gauge. And again, that's buckling up. So we need to increase the clearance on both of these valves. To the point where this only just slides in and then we're set. Okay, let's try that. Today's my lucky day, I think. That was bang on. Okay, so we'll just lock that one off. And again, prevent it from turning whilst we're locking it. Prevent the adjuster from turning. And do a double check. Now remember, when you're tightening these up, there's a good chance if anything moves, it's going to increase in clearance. That is absolutely bang on. Okay, time for the second one. Right, Let's see where we are with that one. Now that, not enough, a bit more yet. got to try all the different angles and now uh, that's a bit too slack so we'll just tweak that up a bit more it's fiddly imagine doing this to 16 valves I think. okay there you go that's better okay just got a bit of resistance on there Oh, Andy, you've overcooked it. Yeah, too tight. If you have excessive clearance on these, then what can happen is you get the hammer effect where the little adjuster bolt actually starts hammering on the end of the valve and that in itself can cause the components to wear prematurely and then you end up with even more clearance and then you get more hammering effect and then you get it actually damages the top of the valve stem. The adjuster you can replace dead easy but the valve, well that's a head off job and uh, expensive too. Okay, they are equally set. Cool. Okay, we'll just give them a little tweak, make sure that we're all good. Yep. Yep. And like I say, there is a torque setting for these bolts, or so these nuts, so I'll let you have that on the screen. Cool. Good job. Okay, time to put the covers back on. Now both covers are the same, so there's no need to worry about which one goes where. And all eight bolts are also the same as well. Now, 
these bolts standard don't have thread lock on them and I don't think we really need to put thread lock on them. Uh, and the torque setting I'll put on the screen as well. I'm pretty sure it's 10 mil, uh, 10 newton meters, but um, I think which is pretty standard for an M6 bolt on Yamaha stuff. But I'll put it on the screen. I could be wrong. Sometimes I'm wrong. Can't remember everything. And always tighten them up diagonally as well. Don't over tighten them, Mr. Young. Hence why we use door fringes. Hmm. Okay, done. Right, now for the intake one. Until next time, intake valves. Right, cover back on. Almost there now. Oh, that's the first of the big jobs done. Excellent stuff. Valve clearances checked and all set. Damn, almost forgot. Little covers to go back on. Okay, that's that one. And again, there are torque settings for these, that, but in all honesty, nobody's ever stuck to them. Because it doesn't feel like it's anywhere near enough. You don't want one of these falling out, because if it did, you'd lose lots of engine oil. But I'll put them on the screen, and then you know what they should be. And then you can't tell me off for not telling you. that one. Like I said, there are torque settings, yes. Do I use them? Well, not all of them. There we go. Cool. Okay. Now, just for your reference, I have taken off the rear wheel and another inner panel that sort of runs about here, like a big mudguard thing. That's been taken off. And there's an outer plastic panel as well. And I've taken all that off to make it much easier to get in here to film for you. Um, so it's not going to be quite as easy when you come to do this job, unless you do what I've done. And taking those panels off is only a five minute job, so it does make it a lot easier to get places and to inspect certain things, you know. And there's other stuff you need to do when you're servicing your vehicle, you know, including sort of oiling up, up here, which is the uh, the gear, levers, gear change linkage. That should have some grease put on the various pivot points and stuff. So it, taking the panels off does make it a lot easier to get the job done. So all in all, it probably doesn't take any longer. Right, back to the workbench. Okay, well, there you go. Valve clearances done in detail on a Yamaha Viking. Um, 2014, I believe that one is. Intake uh, valve clearance 0 0.09 to 0 0.13 millimetres and the exhaust valve clearance 0 0.16 to 0 0.2 millimetres. Dead easy. Um, what made my job a lot easier? Well, one of those little special tools with a little square indent. This is Yamaha one. Yes, you can get these aftermarket, I'm sure you can. And of course, the little tiny thin feeler gauges. Not a major advantage on that particular task. I think normal size feeler gauges would have been just, just as easy. Um, but on some of the valve clearances that I have to set on the little fiddly motorbikes and stuff, these thin ones are, well, they're imperative. WR450s and things, absolutely imperative. Without these, you just can't get in. So yeah, part number, well, there you go, look, part number. So it's called a thickness gauge and it's 01, what the hell does that say? 01399, 01399. Easy. And you can order those through Yamaha. Yes, they're a Yamaha special tool. But Yamaha dealers, especially the one that I deal with, are very, very helpful. And, um, you know, if you have the vehicles, you should have the tools, access to the tools to work on those vehicles. It shouldn't be dealer only. And um, 
Ian's very much of that opinion too. Okay, so there you go. My name is Andy Young. I'm one of the automotive lecturers down at Unitech in Auckland, New Zealand. Thank you for watching one of my Andy Mechanic videos. I hope you found it helpful, um, not too boring. I know they tend to drag on a little bit, but I do try to cover the technical aspect of some of these jobs and include the specifications and a step-by-step step, step step procedure. So it's a bit more like a workshop manual to video kind of thing. That's what I'm aiming for, where it's got a little bit of theory behind everything as well as to why things do what they do or how they react the way they react. So hang in there, bear with me, and you will learn a lot of stuff, guaranteed. My students certainly do. Okay, well, any questions or comments, leave them down the bottom, and I'll get back to you as soon as I possibly can. If you'd like to join the 100-plus subscribers to the channel, doesn't sound a lot, but hey, I'm well chuffed with that, click subscribe. You'll get free notifications as and when any new videos get uploaded. And uh, there's usually three or four a week, just depending on how things are panning out at my end. I have got a lot of things to get done, and uh, the more jobs I have to do, sometimes it has an adverse effect on the videos because the videos take a lot of time to put together and edit and upload. Uh, I don't just use raw footage, there's quite a, quite a big editing process goes on. And uh, well, it stops me watching TV most nights. Okay, there you go. Job done. Thanks for watching. Over and out.